You want to always cook asparagus in shallow water where you can pull them out easily when they're ready. I eat. It's especially nice to get the really thick asparagus, even thicker than this, okay, and peel them because the inside is very buttery and soft. And then the peels, you get to make an asparagus sauce or asparagus soup or asparagus risotto. It's great to get the byproduct on this. Boom. And you just do a nice, you know, one for every, you know, you do it nice and even. Don't take too much off, eh? And it makes it really creamy inside. A little bit of the skin, it just makes it more buttery, it makes it easier to chew. So now we're going to do a little experiment here. And I'm going to try it with and without salt. So the first ones, the pencil asparagus, had no salt in, in the water. Now the white and the green are both going to have salt inside the water. Just a little bit. I'm going to see the difference. Like with this, you know, wiggling the asparagus trick, okay? The more you keep cooking and the more you pay attention to what happens to vegetables, the longer they cook. It's great to do an, ex an experiment with asparagus and overcook it on purpose and see the difference in, in the flexibility of it so you got that down. And when you're cooking, you can get the exact desired result you want just by looking at how it behaves in the water. Okay, that's what you should be doing with all the things that you make regularly. Set yourself up with things that are indicators. I'm giving you a whole bunch of them, but you're also probably seeing a lot of them and not recognizing the indicators. So keep a lookout for things like that. Also, when you're stirring pasta in the side of salted water, it's the same thing. Pay attention to how it behaves and you start to learn just by looking when the pasta is ready. And there it is. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. That one's a little stiff still. That one's good. That one's good. That one's very good and perfect. That one's good. Yeah, hey, they're all good. Cool. And now, the white ones. So again, you're identifying with connecting yourself to what you're doing with flow. Like, you know, you start to look and you start to dream and you start to, you know, think, I'm an asparagus, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? I'm an asparagus, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? I mean, you really get in touch with what, what's happening here and that's your sixth sense. You got your other five senses are all working, you're smelling it, because this smells amazing too. You're feeling it, you're looking at, you're looking how... Looking at how it changes as it cooks, how it changes color, because everything changes color a little bit as it cooks. And you see, and you, you know, you're using its texture to help you to decide what's going on. That's connecting you to this asparagus, so you're going to know what to do with it also, because you're going to start dreaming about asparagus. Good, 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 good. good. Slightly limp is good, and that's it. I don't need any more of this. Feel it? Now we're going to start to arrange, we're going to arrange our asparagus and then cover it in sheets. So we're going to do the big ones on their own, like this, the, big, the thicker ones, like that. I'm going to put a couple of these on there too. And then we're going to do the pencil ones and the white ones together. Just like this. Pencil asparagus. And we're gonna do these kind of bundled up together a little bit. Like that. We'll put a ton of cheese on them. And these we're gonna spread them out. Beautifully, like this, like a latch. So the cheese gets stuck in between each layer 
And then we're going to go on top again like this. So we're going to put two layers of cheese. And we're going to, we're going to dump, boom, a ton right on top of here. More than you think you need. Okay. And then we're going to put one layer of cheese on this like that. And then put another layer of asparagus like that. Boom. And then a ton of cheese on top. You gotta make sure everything has cheese on it. Absolutely everything. Doesn't have to have a ton of cheese on every part, but everything should have a little cheese on it. And then over here, I'm gonna put this big piece here. I wanna see what happens with that. And we're just gonna completely cover it in cheese. And we and we and we cut almost exactly just enough. Gonna need a little more for the for this. I'll kind of even it out a little bit. Make sure it's everywhere. Make sure everything's got some cheese on it. The same thing here. And you can play around with this between 325 and 425. You can play around in that range here. You can play around with it. You're going to get all kinds of color. Anything over 350, you're going to get color very, very fast. So I'm going to do 325, to 350 to start out to get it melting. And then I'll probably crank it up to 400 and see how it comes out. You see how I piled it in the middle. So it's really going to melt. It's going to create a real crazy... Look, I'm so excited. I love this Parmigiana method. Cheese, the king of cheese, the king of cheese. Imagine it melting and seeping through the cracks of all of those little asparagus, melting and seeping and melting and seeping and liquefying. And then the corners turn brown, like dark, dark brown and cracker-like. So while you're eating it, it's crunchy, chewy, like a cracker, Caramelized, slightly bitter, magical, man. When you bake Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, pure magic. Okay. So I fired the asparagus Parmigiana, completely forgot about it. Went outside to start working in the oven, and the smell drew me in. You see? So it's always the smell. I didn't have to put a timer. I just wait until I can smell it. Let's see what's going on. If I can smell it, that means it's melting. Let's take a look. Yep. And there it is. It's fucking perfect. See that? I smelled when it was ready. Now this is all butter fat. This is all cheese and butter fat. Which goes fantastic with asparagus. What do you put on asparagus? Hollandaise. Bernays sauce. That's what makes it great. It's Parmesan cheese. Raw, grass-fed cows. Look at this beautiful ooze. I think that these come out the best when they're nice and thick, when they're the thickest asparagus. And that's what we serve in the restaurant. We serve the big jumbo asparagus, a la parmigiana. But I couldn't find any jumbo asparagus. But this is definitely better because it's a little bit, it's just perfectly cooked. It should, it should just collapse. The, the asparagus should, should just collapse. But this white asparagus looks like it's really the star of the show. Now let's get some of that right away. Look at that with the cheese. Let's just get one. And make sure we get it with some cheese. Yeah, just like that. Super hot, you gotta be careful, but it's gonna be nice and soft. Mm. Oh my god. Absolutely perfect. Holy crap. I mean, always take some of the cheese with it. And take some of this too. Some of the brown cheese, some of the regular cheese, like that, and design your bite. Mmm. Oh. Mm. 